Hey there guys, it's your man, it's the Sentinel from Cross Tabletop and uh, we've got our army out for the weekend, we're playing in an RTD, RTT down in uh, Oxford Whitney um, so this is the list I'm going to be taking, it's a 2000 point list a uh, few changes to the last one I should say a lot of changes as you can tell we've kept the drop pod, we've kept the Devastator squad um, let's break it down from the beginning though before we get into all the meat and grind of it all so we've got the chapter master at the front there so, got the chapter master at the front. Uh, we've equipped him with a relic blade. We've kept him with his mastercrafted bolter. We've got his four pin van, five wounds. We've also equipped him with the relic of I've hidden off and the warlord trait that allows me to generate D3 extra command points at the beginning. Nice, simple command bonus, you know, or a re roll everything sort of uh, body as a chapter master. Nice and simple, nice and cheap, 135 points. Um, next to him then is the Tech Marine. He's been upgraded to the Forge Father to give him that ability to heal flat three to a vehicle. He's back in the list. He's doing his job. He's making sure the vehicles hit better. Um, he's also been upgraded to have the Rights of War Warlord trait, um, just so I can give that a little bit more obsec at the back or onto the middle objective, depending on where the uh, vehicles go or the Hellblasters. Yeah, I'm tempted to swap his Warlord trait out for the D3 extra command points and put the Rights of War onto the Chapter Master. Um, just to give me that flexibility, he sits at the back and he runs forward to the middle objective with the Hellblasters and then the Hellblasters are a 10-man unit with Obsec. Okay, so the third HQ, which is always what I'm telling you to do now, is to take a uh, Inquisitor. So that's my Inquisitor. She's got Needle Pistol and um she's a psyker so they're just purely to do psych interrogation she is a, a, in the heretic um domain so if i do come against um chaos i can minus one attack and minus one to something that over what uh, yeah minus one to their number of attacks and minus one to hit as a, as a psychic power if it goes off it's quite useful you know when you're thinking a 10 man terminator squad or possessed and you're taking one attack away from them and you're making a minus one to hit you you know from one psychic power i think that's quite nice it has to be you have to roll higher than the leadership to get the second bit off which is the minus one to hit um so it's it's a pretty nice little uh, the thing there and you have to give up psych interrogation but that's see how that goes okay so that's the hqs and then we're going to follow up with the troop choices um i do believe at the moment currently if we're going to go with shooty troops the tactical marine squad with the grav cannon exactly the same points as an intercess unit and actually just before outperforming now against those two wounded models with the grav cannon um yes they're not amazing in combat over the intercessors or the assault intercessors but i just found if i'm in combat i'm already like losing the game so against those armies that kill me in combat should we say they're, they're still pretty good at like uh combat with necron warriors or immortals against themselves another tactical marine or even intercessors they're pretty good against as long as they're not the assault intercessors because of the um, stat lines that they've both got against legionnaires they're pretty good in combat against as well but it's against those armies that have the uh, extra attack the ap they just they fall over regardless if they're intercessors or tactical marines so it's a tactical marine with a grab cannon um i do have the sergeant in there with a the power sword i'm just making up another character now with another power sword because i realized i didn't have two mini marines with power swords <laughs> so he's been he's on my desk at the moment so he'll have a power sword just to be able to cut through those marines or that one wound because what i found is the chainsaw is nice for the extra attack because they, they only got two base three with the chainsaw four for on the charge but if i go with the power sword there's three on the charge they actually do kill on generally just kill one model over the chainsaw not killing anything so yeah I'm going into the power sword just to make sure I kill that one model if it's an Eldar warrior or something like that. Then we've gone with a unit of infiltrators. Uh, so these are the shooty ones. So they auto wound on sixes to hit. Uh, they've got the infiltrate rule so they can sit in the middle of the ward. They've also got the defensive no um, no deep strike within 12. So that affects the, uh, the, the likes of, say, um, nids from deep striking in or drop... Uh, Blood Angels from Deep Striking In, uh, I'm thinking Drop Pods, I'm thinking um, 
the pre pre null the pre null deploy pre game move that they can null deploy as well. They can do that. But the twelve inches against uh, say Gene Steeler Colt, which are coming back up in the ranks again, uh, and other other sort of deep striking units, a Tau for instance, I can then start making sure that the Tau aren't coming in too close and things like that. So that's there. It's the it's the anti deep strike. They also have the upgrade for the medic. So ignoring that first failed armor save. A little bit expensive, 130 points for what they do. Um, but they are a great defensive unit and hopefully that's what they'll be used as. as that defensive, no dropping in within 12 of my Hellblasters. And then I can keep my Hellblasters and Lorry for a little bit longer. So then I have the uh, Heavy Intercessors. Um, again, not a great unit because of the points cost. But when you take away the... If you're going for the 100 point type of troops... They're 150, the infiltrators are 130, that left me 80 points. It wasn't quite enough to make another tactical squad. Um, so what I thought was I'd rather have a unit that was harder to remove from the back objective. So I've gone with the heavy intercessors. They are the long range shooty ones. Uh, so they can sit on that back objective and you know sit in a piece of train, give them an extra arm save from the impel fist where they don't, where they're sitting in train at the defensive, defensive grounds. Um, uh, and then basically on a T T5, three wounds with an extra arm save, being in cover, then you can give them transhuman, you can give them feel no pain, and because they're in a gravis armor, you can give them the extra arm save if they if it's one damage. So the idea is that is my very resilient unit to sit at the back objective and just hold there and stay all game. That's the sort of logic behind it, but you never know that might not work. Okay, so that's the troops. Uh, also, for my tactical squad, giving them a Razorback with the last cannon, um, just purely because I don't have a lot of movement in the army, and a tactical marine squad being able to sit in the Razorback and push up onto the middle objective or one of the flank objectives in turn one is massive. I, I need to be pushing forward to push the uh, keep the army that I'm fighting in their deployment zone. And since I've been doing that with the Rhino in the drop pod, um, I've found that the games are not 20 point swings, they're more 10 point swings. They just give me that little bit more presence for the primary and I'm able to hold the primary just for one extra turn or two extra turns longer um, and able just to keep the score closer. So really enjoying them at the moment. And then the Grav Cannon is really cool as well. So that leaves the Elite slots. I've gone with Back to the Redemptor because I need something that is the scary. It was the Centurions, but now the Redemptor's back to take the Centurion's place to be that scary threat that's going to shoot. Um, it's going to be in combat. It's not easy to kill. Armor Contempt does keep it around a little bit longer. I did face Voton the other day, and with the magic last cannon that they've got on their uh, vehicle, 12 damage is the maximum it does. So you can survive from the Votan um, last cannon shot essentially you know if you're unlucky with the arm save uh, with the trip arm save and if you get him in a position where that is the only shot that can be thrown at him you've got a good chance the tech marine then can put three more wounds back on him and, and still function so that's what he's there he's there just to be that distraction kind effects in the army uh, and he does a great job of that then we've got the shooty part of the army, which is then going to be the uh, Contemptor with Volkites and Rockets. Now, I do really like the Plasma, but if I'm going with the Plasma on the Hellblasters, I don't need a Plasma Contemptor. I need anti-infantry. So he's my anti-infantry. And this came prevalent when I took him in the team tournament against the Sisters. He absolutely annihilates Sisters uh, brutally. Uh, and completely i thought it was fantastic those repentures didn't stand a chance the chainsaw i think they're the chainsaw dudes and then the uh, guys with the melters really did well and then the seraphim died really quickly from it as well so i was really impressed with how efficient this guy was against that t3 um t, t toughness 3 model so he's going to be my anti-infantry horde killer that's the sort of role i want him to play and so far he's doing really well at that um he only on average kills one or two space marines of that t4 uh two wounds and then it, you know he only kills maybe one and a half if i'm lucky of a t5 three wounded model but the mortal wound output is amazing when it goes off i think i killed just him alone i killed six destroyers the other, five destroyers the other day um, I got really lucky, hit really well, and then wounded extremely well with the, on the destroyers and the mortar wounds as well. I rolled like six sixes on the mortar wound output. So, you know, 
if it goes off, it can be a massive swing in the game. So he's there just to provide that anti-infantry potential threat. Then we've got below him is my uh, replacement for the Centurions for the anti-combat, not the anti, it's not anti-combat. So then um, I've also got the Blade Guard. Again, this is the replacement for the combat element of the army from the Centurions. They're the same points of what the Centurions were costing me. Uh, they got the four pin bomb. Centurions get that anyway on average, the four against most things. Um, but I found that the Centurions were very much too, they were too slow to start off with, so they couldn't get across the board quick enough. The units you were fighting against them generally had transhuman or they were spending CP to stop the damage output from them because they knew they were brutal. Um, and then they bounced and then they died in return. So the Blade Guard are, uh, when I looked at the stat line of what my army's doing and where I'm doing the damage, I found that that between the Blade Guard and the Centurions, they're not as threatening as the Centurions, so they get left alone a little bit longer. And then you just pick your targets. They can't hit everything, unfortunately, like the Centurions could, but they can pick a certain target and survive against them in return. So they do really well against uh, anything that's a character. They survive characters really, really well. Um, just beautiful because of the four pin bond and the transhuman. So they they are there to take on those big scary characters and stick around for one turn long enough to allow the shooting part of the army to do the job. And they also kill infantry uh, in great numbers as well. So as long as I'm not going against the elite side of the armies, so they don't do very well against other elite, elite combat armies. So uh, they don't do very well against sanguinary. They don't do amazingly well against um, anything that reduces damage by one. So any Contemptors, Redemptors, uh, any of the Dreadnoughts variants. They don't do very well against Orcs in the sense of the their Strength 5, Toughness 5. So they don't kill them very well. They don't do very well against Death Guard. That's the, that's the biggest downfall. Blade Guard struggle to kill Death Guard. But every other unit, they're pretty, damn, they're pretty versatile and they balance themselves out with the uh, Centurions. So that's the combat element. We're going into the devastator part of it now. Uh, so fast attack, I just have 60 points left over and I was like, do you know what? Just throw the attack bike in there. It's one of those units that you can deploy because it's only a one man unit. You deploy it hidden somewhere. It can move that 14 inches out. Just take that pot shot off and then the opponent is, oh crap, I've got to deal with it. Because another two shots when the multi mount finishes off a tank or um, a character at the back because it's knocked around or something that they weren't expecting so it's just that additional threat and he can reach any of the middle objectives and the central objective really comfortably and put some pressure on and if you're really clever you can make that assault turn one as well onto a unit that you believe he will survive against um so yeah that's for him that's the elite so i find it quite interesting with that gentleman on there doing his job so uh in the in the heavy support section we have the Devastator unit. Uh, now the Devastator unit I'm currently using as a multi-melter with a Cherub and then three Grav Cannons. Um, just purely because of the damage to on those models with three, three up saves. A lot of people have now got three up saves so they're just shredding through the Tactical Marines, the Legionnaires, um, any of the Space Marine sort of counter bodies they do pretty damn good at, pretty well at and um, they're, they're pretty versatile in that sort of sense of weight of dice, strength and damage. They are much, much, much better at the moment than Heavy Bolters purely because of the AP and because of Heavy Bolters now have lost their AP essentially, um, the Grav Cannon fills the slot really nicely at the same points. So those are three Grav Cannons, Multi Melter and the Sergeant with the Cherub and then they are going to ride in the Drop Pod and then I've got three Eliminators at the back with two last Fusels and the, what is it? It is the Bolt Carbine on the Sergeant. Now, you might be thinking why the Bolt Carbine uh, and why the last Fusels? The last Fusels don't really do much throughout the whole game. Um, I found they're very swingy, um, but the Bolt Carbine allows me to get across the table. And because there's no point difference taking a Bolt Carbine and the Sniper Rifle over the last Fusel, the last Fusel is more reliable than the Carbine, uh, the Sniper Rifle. So, yeah, why not? Uh, these, I purely use these guys as, 
as defensive units in a army that has pre-game move. So if you've got a pre-game move, they are going to, if they can, if I believe I'm going to do well at it, they are going to sit on that front line and stop that pre-game move, especially against the sisters. I don't care if they die turn one. If the sisters get turn one, as long as they don't get that pre-game move to get their melters in range uh, from their vehicles, so be it. 75 points to stop a rhino from effectively dropping 10 melter shots on me is is the great trade um so that's their job that's what they do they are there to stop that pre-game move especially against say uh, the necrons they're very good at just blocking that pre-game move from the necrons and then if i do get first they're able to move shoot move and then charge the front lines or butt behind something and just be a nuisance in the back lines they do very well against uh, sisters again once they do that and the same with the infiltrators so that's their job uh, just to be a nuisance and then we have over here is the big bread and butter of the army um, is the 10 hell blasters with the assault variant so that is 30 shots at strength six yeah ap4 um you know one damage and then strength seven overcharging so 30 shots at strength seven overcharging at ap4 two damage they don't generally get very often where i'm using the two damage unless i'm going up against blood angels because they've dropped everything in and i just need to do as much damage as possible regardless of the sacrifice and i'm trying to kill all of their sanguinary and all their uh deep striking choppy boys the death company and stuff like that but they're amazing at taking down light vehicles uh, with the AP and the fact with the rerolls from the chapter master because that's when he's going to be buffing them. And they do have the eye of hitting off of the reroll ones for the uh, wounds, which is nice. But on average, they will take down a T8 vehicle on average really quite easy with 30 shots. Um, they obliterate anything uh, infantry wise, which is really nice. And if you get them in the right place at the right time, at the right range, you can effectively split fire and take out multiple units. I did this at the Sisters Doubles Tournament, Repenture, Seraphin, um, and the Melter guys. And then I also at the same time with split firing, because it was two, two, two sort of shots, and I did really well with the rerolls. Uh, and the Strength 6 helped with the T3 bodies, so I didn't have to overload all the things. And then I put the like, three shots into some sanguinary and three shots into some death company and was able to clear up something like 23 bodies with a 10 man unit so they did really really well that game um and, and it was just getting me in the right place at the right time with the re-rolls so that's my anti-horde anti-infantry anti-everything sort of unit they do really good in the shooting and because they are primaris marines they do get to have all the benefits as well from the transhuman the you know feel no pains uh, they can use Gene Warp Might if they want to, uh, you know, so they're, they're good all-round action units, you know, killer units. So that's the army, that's the 2,000 points. So secondaries for this is, it's going to be Psych Interrogation, it's going to be Raise the Banners, uh, and then it's going to be a killy one. Now, I'm generally leaning towards No Prisoners at the moment, just purely because most people are bringing like five... 50 wounds on the table of the infantry models so i'm having to just wipe out all the infantry and if i wipe out all the infantry then it usually loses the obsec ability and you can start to pull away on the primary at the same time uh, assassinate is really difficult because most people aren't bringing 15 points on assassinate usually 10 and then you wait until like turn four maybe to get that opportunity to, and and you're just waiting too long in the game to do the damage you need to so i'm trying to stay away from assassinate uh, unless it's against demons obviously because they're running like six demons in your face and you've got to deal with them uh, but are generally going towards no prisoners engager could do with the drop pod the rhino in the vehicles they can do no prisoners so that is potentially not no prisoners engage but i just find that's a bit more of a stretch i have to be in a better position to do it and i'm not quite 100 percent on the positioning of um quarters and things like that and unit cohesion when it comes to engage so essentially it's no prisoners for the another ball with psych interrogation and a killy one like no uh, like oh not killy one razor banners i find that razor banners for me is you know an average of seven to ten um which is comfortable it's not brilliant um but i i think it's it's ticking up the boxes it's wrapping up the points and if you can get those infiltrators and you know last cannon fuse was in the right place with the rhino you can really start to take control of the board and put some pressure on the enemy the more pressure you can put on your opponent to make a decision 
the more likelihood is they'll make a bad decision and it'll be into your benefit when you can take that decision into your own hands. So that's the army. Hope you enjoyed the breakdown. Uh, I look forward to doing some discussions on the ITC uh, points that the ITC points system are doing. Um, some LGT sort of uh, decisions that went awry with clocks and you know personnel's abilities not to finish the game uh, and i think that's a little bit down to the community itself but i'll discuss that um, more uh, and then just an all-round breakdown of certain armies that i think are doing well at the moment so stick around hope you enjoy and i'll catch you all later